a weekly we do a caregiver tip of the day. <laughs> You're messing with my theme. I'm messing with yours, man. All right. <laughs> You're messing with my head. Uh, our caregiver tip of the day is sponsored by AARP of Tennessee, and that's aarp.org slash TN for Tennessee. Um, and they have been with this show from, from really the beginning. And I'm very grateful for them. They have a huge smorgasbord of things to help a family caregiver. And this is one, uh, this lady asked me, said, how do you function? How do you try to help yourself function in the relationship with the person you're doing so that you're not always the caregiver, but you can be the husband or the spouse or the whatever. And, and, and basically how, how do you be, husband versus caregiver all the time. Yeah. And that's a, that's a bit of real trick. And Gracie will tell you that there are times when she has to say, no, you're being a caregiver. I need you to be a husband. And, and I, I get that because just making meals and, and doing all the tasks we do as caregivers make us somehow think that we're really participating in the relationship. We're not. And here's an easy way to remember that for me, this is how I do it for me. See the heart, not the chart. See the heart not the chart. It's so easy for us to be locked in to seeing all the medical needs and all the, just the, the variety, the inventory of needs that our loved one has. But we need to see the heart too. And if we can just remind ourselves periodically of those things, it's going to increase the value and the quality of the relationship we have, whether it's our spouse, whether it's a child, whether it's an aging parent, and and you have a special needs child. My brother has a special needs daughter. She's thirty years old. She is um, uh, basically the equivalent of about a eighteen month old. She's completely wheelchair bound. But guess what? She has a heart. She has a personality, and it's okay to enjoy that personality aside from all the medical needs that she has. And it's not just taking care of this this. Uh, object. You're taking care of a person, a person who has real heart needs, even if they are dealing with special needs issues, even if they are dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever. They are struggling in their own way, and they need all the things that you and I need. Love, acceptance, physical touch, kindness, gentleness, engagement, and they need those things as well. And if we deny them those things, all it does is create more angst in the relationship, and it ultimately will harm both of us. And this is a hard lesson. It's a hard place to keep this in mind because the needs of the body sometimes drown out the, the, the cry of the heart. And so it's very important for us to listen with both ears. And that takes a little bit of skill, a little bit of practice. That doesn't mean that, that it's a burden for us to do it. It just means it's a muscle we need to work as caregivers why? Because we're just giving so much, giving so much, and it's all up to us? No, because we become better people in listening to the heart cry of those around us. We do. We really do. It, 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 it increases our capacity to love. It's like an auger drilling down into our heart that opens up our ability to love better, to love freer, to love more of an engaged way. Uh, and, and then in the process, again, you've heard me say this over and over and over in the show. The goal is not to feel better because we're not going to feel better about a lot of the things we have to do. The goal is to be better, to be better. And part of learning to be better is to love, to, to extend that, not just by making a meal or, or doing the task of caregiving, but by seeing the heart, not the chart. Hey, this is Hope for the Caregiver. This is the nation's number one show for family caregivers. I'm Peter Rosenberger. We'll be right back. 